Well, hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome to Hump Day. I believe it is Hump Day, so I trust all of us are well. And yes, as I go through the motions here uh, and mute this so that I don't hear myself coming and going, because that's a strange reality, but I think many of us live this. Uh, welcome, everyone. Let me just say, favor be upon us all. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You speak it you can claim it and it will come and claim you. Uh, so welcome, thank you all the moderators, all of the folks in the chat room. I have a really uh, a special guest. I'm really looking forward to this. You've seen him in the chat room and no doubt have interacted. And uh, this is exciting because uh, Brandon, and who is my guest, hello Brandon, how are you doing? Doing great, Wayne. How are you today? Any better, I would be guilty, but I was never that innocent. <laughs> never wanted to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brandon, I am excited to have you on because you really do represent the what will be the next generation. Uh, by the time you take your position, if we're still around, mm -hmm. I, I think some form will be, uh, my generation will have passed and you are about two torches down the line. So uh, 25 years of age, uh, fantastic. I, I'm honored, number one, to have you on. And the fact that you would that you even listen, I think that's cool. It shows that spirituality doesn't know chronological age at all. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. And like, it's really cool because someone like yourself has been teaching people and educating people for such a long time. And people got to realize that that's like tremendous value that every single day you're doing a live stream at, you know, 11 AM my time and for an hour and, and teaching people what, you know, because like you said, uh, passing the torch, I think that that's very important because what, what good is having all of the, the answers or the information or things like that, or even like the money in the world. Right. Uh, if, if other people don't, you know, share some of that experience with you. So it's really cool what you're doing. And, and Thank same you. thing with the, the, the soul tribe, it kind of reminds me of like the, the hexagon community and things like that, where it's the tight knit community. Uh, there's a lot of strength and power behind it. And it really is something that's, that's like, uh, evolving and kind of forming, uh, every single day. I think it's evolving on many different fronts. You know, um, not only with this group here, but as you said, with the community that you have, and there are many other extraneous communities that are associated with this group as well. Mm. Well, that's the beautiful thing with the internet, you know, like yeah, we can, yeah. you know, connect and, and share ideas and learn from each other. Think about back in the 1800s, you know, what did they actually have? You, you, your social group was you, the farm animals, and now if you lived in the city, it may be a little bit more, but mm -hmm. yeah, so, and it's one of the best things that we can use the internet for. It's, it's used for such devious purposes, uh, you know, that we can actually add a little bit of good. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. the way I look at it. And uh, so we're going to be talking about wealth today because... As I sit here, and you and I were talking prior to we went uh, live, my background uh, is in payment. Um, was fortunate to be, um, my company was the first company we successfully integrated a credit card terminal to a restaurant point of sale enterprise system, and which is the whole back office. In fact, Brandon, I went in through my archives and actually, so everyone could see, this is what the first pay at the table credit card terminal looked like. We had Verifones and we also had the Israeli company, uh, Litman, with their, mm. these were, now of course this is, we made the breakthrough in 2004. So I look back and realize it's almost 20 year technology. Sure. But what people don't realize is that there was a time where payment was not transacted through a Wi-Fi uh, connection. Mm. Um, There's a lot to that. And I was part of the, in fact, I was, we were pushing Verifone's engineers way beyond their capacity. And mm. when we did the first Wi-Fi transaction, which was actually in a restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, it shocked the whole payment world. Um, so seeing where payment has come as I've seen it uh, evolve. Um, and then I invented the first 
you know, nonprofit mobile app. There was no mobile mm. app. Mine was the first. How yeah, did I do that? So cool. Well, it was because the uh, Visa and MasterCard used our technology that we connected to do pay at the table at, of all places, um, California Pizza Kitchen, right off of Sunset Boulevard, right there in LA, was where the first pay at the table transaction was commercially done. And they wanted to know how we made the connection here. And eventually it's what we now have, mobile payment. And the evolution of mobile payment has now also evolved into what we call the cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. of which you are becoming very much familiar. Um, I was at the first Money 2020 and went back again. This is where, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. These, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you think about it, uh, this was 2012. This was 2011, where uh, actually, excuse me, um, Bitcoin was introduced to us, uh, mm -hmm. the folks in the payment industry. And I was actually in the, the, me in the, in the, the, the meeting that day, and there were a thousand one questions, you know, well, yeah. how do you get involved? And the thing about it is many of us kick ourselves in the ass because we could have gotten involved. Are you ready for this? For $5,000. Mm, yep. 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 Today we would have been multi hundredaire millionaire. Oh, yeah. So yeah. And well, today yeah. we come into where cryptocurrency is becoming, you have governments now they're leaving, they're leaving the fiat system. And which I don't think is a good because they're they're bringing their garbage with us. Mm -hmm. And then I look at your generation. You're a millionaire. Uh, you got involved very early in the understanding, and you're with uh, your group is 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 Hex. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, it's it's really cool that you mentioned kind of some of the innovation that you have had, right? And kind of where the the system is currently today. And so the the founder of Hex is uh, Richard Hart, and from a from a very early age, he had shown like a lot of science of success, going to you know uh, like really really smart people school. He like a member of Mensa back in the day, yeah. things like this. And and uh, anyway, so successful people kind of developing solutions and innovations to to your point to some of the control. I mean because. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a lot of the things in life is, is control. And a lot of people don't really realize that if you have a, a different, better system that might have more opportunity, then, hey, it doesn't hurt to kind of learn about some of that new technology. I mean, uh, in one of the in one of the interviews and for a documentary that's coming out at the end of the year, one of the ladies kind of use it as an analogy of like the internet super early on where a lot of people thought, okay, this is just for email, but but then you see that it's used for so much more. And so to be able to have uh, decentralized trustless systems where you don't have to trust man, but you can, you can look at the uh, code itself and kind of trust that code. I think that's a, you know, a bright future compared to if we didn't have that technology where we'd be heading. I love the analogy because um, I was at a, a meeting in 1999. It was called Executive Mindshare. Bezos was in there. There were a number of people at the time. And we had that very discussion is, all right, so what is the internet? What do we do with this? Um, E-commerce was just becoming, you know, thought about. Uh, mm -hmm. And so to make the analogy that where we are now with the numerous ways of which one can get involved into whether it's the data mining for Bitcoins or a cedra, it's, it's amazing. It, it is kind of like the new frontier. Yeah, well, it's true. And you mentioned kind of being able to have the opportunity, right, of, of getting into Bitcoin in 2011. Um, it, it's, it's insane. The, the system that we have currently, we don't realize uh, some of the potentials for some of these other things that once again are better because uh, Bitcoin used to be a penny at the time. Like, and it used to be even under a penny and it used to be free to mine. You could literally just double click an EXE. Uh, the founder <laughs> of Hex, he used to be an early Bitcoin miner too in 2011, but you could mine that for free. And that went from a penny to $69,000, which is 6.9 million fold, <laughs> you know? And so obviously <laughs> after 6.9 million fold, you, you know, it had it shown, I mean, now about 14 years later that 
people people thought about these certain narratives just as they did with the internet early on but then the the proof is in the pudding right the actuality had kind of proved that okay there is something here there is adoption it's not just a, a taboo thing anymore it's something that you know a lot of people are getting interested and in, invested is it is it and that's a, that's an interesting question because you know I don't usually deal in, in, in shows where people, where we talk about money, but here's mm. the thing. One of the things I know of my spiritual background mm. is that, you see, I come out of the, the name it and claim it. Uh, we believed in prosperity. I was taught yep. prosperity from the 70s, which taught me something very early. There, there are spiritual hierarchies that control money um yeah. i was just reading uh, manly p halls you know and in one of his books that there are gnomes for instance that control mm -hmm. money they control where the gold is the diamonds those are still the foundations of all transactions it's still tied to something physical it's just now we've converted that into a digital domain and so yeah. The way I look at it, if it's early, then there's opportunity for people to begin. They don't need large sums. And by the way, we're not giving financial advice. We're just having a discussion of where the system and where uh, payment is at. But there is opportunity for the individual. And you said some earlier, you have to do a little study, right? You have, you have to learn about what part of payment you're getting into. For me, I went to, I actually went to a school called uh, Payments 101. Yeah. Learning about the backbone, who controls it. You know, back in the day, it was with First Data, how Visa and MasterCard are all tied into the system. So I know it. I know it very well. I, I know this as well. There's a lot of assholes that are in that yeah. business. Yeah. Um, I know that. I've had to go to court to protect mm -hmm. what, you know, we invented. So it, it, it's a cutthroat business. But um when I see someone like yourself getting involved in the payment aspects, I said, well, maybe there's hope because you bring a certain gnosis and enlightenment into the equation. Mm. So getting back, so a person can learn your system, right? Yeah. So, I mean, just uh, hex.com is the website and, and that's the really cool thing is it's just uh, super easy to remember, you know, three three letter dictionary.com domain. But, I like um, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is, it really is kind of like, uh, even though I was born in 96, I, I definitely use that analogy of the, the internet early on because I know people that are, you know, in my family that, that might be older, right. That used to say like, Oh, you know, we don't want to uh, get in, uh, get with the times on say smartphones or, you know, you know, some of these other things. And then, and then eventually they realized, wait, this, this tech can be used to, to benefit me, or there's things that's clearly it's not going away. Um, so yeah, as far as the, the cryptocurrency itself, it's, it's, a uh, it's completely decentralized, right? It's permissionless, which I absolutely love because, um, you know, most places in society that you look at these days do have a lot of control and do have, you know, that grip around your neck. And so to be able to kind of have like, self-sustainability and not have to rely on other people once again i think is, is super awesome and then also uh like you mentioned none of this is financial advice we're just having a conversation as, yeah. as two friends but the the thing that i love also in in life is being able to like you say prosperity and uh i had a very similar upbringing to you know the religious stuff that you talk about as well and and anyways yeah it's it's awesome to see that who was it um, copeland by the way i'm just curious who was your prosperity Oh, um, yeah, pretty I mean, much a lot of the stuff that I learned. Yeah, from I was going to say, probably I mean, your parents, right? He still right? watches him, and yeah, he still yeah, watches him yeah, and things yeah. like that. Um, but but it really is true, and like the the cool thing is too is like with with myself or with the community or someone like Richard Hart. Um, once you kind of have some of that that wealth, it really allows you to make uh, some significant changes and in the betterment, right, in the ecosystem or, or in the world that people want to see, but they might not be able to have that opportunity, right? If, uh, you know, if your cup's not overflowing, once again, you can't pour into the other person's cup. So if your cup ah. is overflowing, then, uh, then, then you can, and you can do things to, to get people onboarded or to make it easier. Right. Because it really is kind of like you say, uh, when, when something is early, that's when the most amount of opportunity is there. It is. And, and, and there is, there's always a risk factor in there as well, but mm -hmm. I want to let everyone know 
So you're you're 25. You 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 don't have to get up nine to five. You don't have to worry about a job because you're and what you've been able to do is and I like it. It's it's sustainable, self sustainable, mm. and that affords you a lifestyle to where you can pursue more things of what I would call the soul than mm. of the physical mm. body. A job is just being a broke. That's what it's mm. you know. It's mm. just over yep. broke and. Yeah. So true. And it's true. Uh, if you have a job, you're nothing more than chattel. Mm. And now I, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I've paid a price for it. I mean, you, when you operate with no safety net, when things go wrong, they really go wrong. Yeah. But I've always been stronger coming back. So in one aspect, but my point for, for you is that to me, this represents the ideal lifestyle that most people would like, because A, I'm getting you're not going hungry. You, 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 you yeah, I love <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the attire because that's my type of attire and th- it, and it costs money to have that privilege. It's not privilege. It's a luxury because mm-hmm. the privilege can be obtained by anyone. Mm-hmm. Would you say that? Because you're at 25. What a remarkable uh, position to be in at so early in the curve. Mm. Yeah. Well, congratulations, by the way, high five, you know, way to do it. (laughs) Thanks. Well, yeah. And and a lot of people in the, in the hex community say the same thing as well, where uh, how cool is it that, um, I mean, yeah, no one wants to, to get up at maybe a time that you don't want to right? work for uh, a boss that you don't like taking orders from things like this. An asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's just a a means to an end, right? It's an exchange of, of value of, your time, which is freaking precious, right? You know, you're never going to be able to get that back. It's not ever guaranteed the next breath, let alone the next day. Um, but the point is, is that how cool is it to, to not have to uh, participate, not necessarily participate, but, but not have to, to do that every single day. To be and, forced. And just, yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm. And, and, you know, and, and with the inflation these days, you're getting paid a couple of shekels and then everything else is, is going up more expensive. I mean, you mentioned with uh, Trina yesterday, um, as far as like the, the farmers and, and mm. the, the cost of diesel and the actual, uh, <laughs> there's, there's so much when it comes to <laughs> what's going on in the world. That's like, that's just, uh, once again, it's, it's, you know, it's getting tighter around the neck. And so um, if there is no solution, then it's like, man, it really is glim and it really is not that hopeful but there there are solutions there are people that are uh, working on making the world a better place instead of using all of that wealth power and control to you know once again for what are you doing with the wealth because that's a good question i mean you know you can get like jack a jack dorsey i met jack at south by southwest in 2006 and i look at his life now and jack suffers from prosperity guilt you know, he, he's accelerated to the point where now he's living a subsistence lifestyle, mentalist, um, because, you know, what post, people don't understand about wealth, it's nice to have, but it comes with a cost and a responsibility. Have you found that so far in your young life? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, because because if someone does have, you're right, if someone does have uh, the means and someone is kind of just living for themselves per se and not necessarily uh, giving back to the thing that kind of had, had fed you and things like that, then obviously it might kind of be like a, a lost opportunity versus someone that that is onboarding people into, uh, I guess, just a system and, and a product that's better. And so, yeah, I mean, I've gotten in probably now hundreds of people into a, a better solution, something that they can not necessarily, it's, you know, sometimes people think linearly where it's like, oh, I have to do all of this thing or, or all of the other thing. And it's like, it's not true. You can, you can always learn a little bit with the learning curve of, hey, how something works, try it out a little bit and see if it's something that, uh, I don't know, is, is going to work for you, if it's successful, things like that. Uh, as far as what I'm doing, I mean, I'm really supporting a lot of the people in the community itself that are on a daily basis, uh, educating people, giving back. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I see you a facilitator. You do a great job at it. You know, you really do. And I'm high five for that. Tell me, Brandon, how did you get involved at what age and hmm. how did you, how did that door open for you? 
Yeah. So it was actually, it was five years ago. I was working for a company, the internet company, uh, CenturyLink. And, okay. Uh, yeah. In, in yeah. Bellevue, downtown Bellevue. And, yeah. Old Quest and, company. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so I've got older brothers and I've always been able to learn from them and their friends and always thought like, Hey, you know, I can, you know, you can even learn from a homeless person on the street. Right. And True. so the point is, is that the, uh, so I met Jesus my, Christ that way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I <digress>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I won't say anything more. I'll let you continue. <laughs> no, no, I, I love it. I love it. Um, so, so the point is, is so I had two older coworkers. Uh, one of them was kind of just, you know, there, you know, once again, just for a paycheck, things like that. But then the other one, uh, his name is Leon. He, uh, he was an entrepreneur, you know, he had uh, a few companies, had a shoe shining company, had a, a jewelry store, uh, you know, sold jewelry, Excellent. precious metals, et cetera. And so I was always, uh, since a very young age, I mean, my parents did real estate. And so I never saw them working for other people, right? It was, it was them working for themselves. I was always curious about, yeah, how, how do you self-sustain or, or like the investing, right? How do I take my paycheck that I'm earning and exchange my time for? And how do I make that grow? Or how do I exchange it for, for assets that'll actually do something instead of just get inflated to death? So the point is, is that when I was working with Leon, him and I would always talk a whole bunch in between, you know, sales and, and on, uh, you know, onboarding new customers and things like that. And, uh, so I got into some of the precious metals, right? The, the gold and the silver. And, and once again, being able to have tangibility, you know, uh, the physical holding of the asset I thought was cool versus say, you know, some of the stuff that's traded on paper that, you know, can, can lead to derivatives. And, and so long story short, Leon, he would always have on the, cause in the CenturyLink, we were in like a, a showroom. It was like three people, uh, including myself into the showroom. On the television, they had like a the stock channel and things like that. CNBC or yeah, Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whichever yeah. one it was, I, I totally yeah. don't remember right the second. But um, the point is, is there was like a like a, a cryptocurrency, uh, like a, a Bitcoin segment. I think back then, about five years ago. And so, just like with anything else, if if I'm curious, I'm gonna do my own research and I'm gonna want to learn more because it piqued my curiosity. And especially. You know, it might not be the first time you hear something. It might be the second or third or fourth that you actually, okay, let me see what this is. So long story short, I had uh, heard about Bitcoin, read about Bitcoin, and uh, I was like, hey, you know, let me throw a little bit into it. And it was, it was like uh, $900 at the time, things like that. And so I invested a little bit, and then I totally forgot about it. Like a couple months later, go by. And then I hear, hear Bitcoin again on the, on the TV, and I go, oh, yeah, you know, I got some of that. And so I go to the to the exchange that I had bought it from. And it was up like two and a half, three times from, you know, the initial amount. Uh, it was, it was, you know, everything in life is cycles and it was on its, you know, positive momentum of the, the market cycle. And then I said, the hockey oh. stick. like, yeah, yeah. I said, well, there's something here. And so the, the point is, is uh, the, the, the space itself, just like with, uh, I don't know, the, the, the dot com crashes and things like that. There's a, there's, it's like that, it's like the 80, 20 rule, except it's like 99.9 .9 to like, you know, 0.01 type of deal <laughs> <laughs> where there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of junk out there, but there's also a lot of legitimacy and there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that are, that are innovating and things like this. And so the, the whole, the whole point of the story is, uh, yeah, I had followed someone named Richard Hart that was a, uh, you know, he's a self-help, uh, you know, author, developer, things like this. He's really good with, uh, you know, previous bitch, uh, previous businesses and like successful ventures once again. And uh, he was always talking about Bitcoin and, you know, some of its pros and cons and things like this. And in 2019, he had decided like, hey, I want to, you know, create my own cryptocurrency. And, and I think that I can do it better, more secure uh, price appreciation, things like this, where, where people can, uh, you know, once again, prosper. So I'd been following it for about five years, a little bit over five years and just stayed in the space every day. You know, I was super curious just as I was in, was in third grade, I had a computer in my room that always made me curious of like surfing the internet, learning. And then same thing with cryptocurrency. I knew that, hey, there's something here. And um, yeah, it worked out. Worked out. I, I would say exceptionally well worked out. So as you begin to get into, because, you know, some of the things about cryptocurrency is, again, no one actually holds physical assets. Um, it's in a digital domain. Um, a lot of trust has to be established between, you know, whoever is actually holding the assets, quote unquote. I know there are companies like, I think it's Coinbase, um, mm -hmm. where anyone can go in and you can have 
as little as a hundred dollars and mm -hmm. you know and allow uh, i think in fact and i'm not promoting this but i think that sure. when you uh open an account they'll actually give you a fraction of a bitcoin mm. that's how mm -hmm. it works uh so and and there's so many new coins coming out mm -hmm. and so and it really depends on again i think um how much traction does it get to with the public and then mm -hmm. what is it's it, and it's a typical cycle, as you said, there's eventually going to be this merger where I think eventually it's going to be established two or three primarily central players, and then everyone else will take their position in the tree accordingly. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's worked like that every time in the past where payment is concerned. And now that you've got governments, um, you know, well, Biden just signed an executive order. So the United States now has this uh this department that is moving with the fed and producing a fed coin mm -hmm. uh what's your thought on that because that begins to mm -hmm. and, and i guess it's a good discussion i'd love to get richard and maybe talk to him about this if you would yeah because yeah, yeah. what i see happening is that my days in politics i know particularly with the senators that i was associated with mm -hmm. they're they all they're always thinking of taxes and they couldn't understand bitcoin was, well, how does the IRS interfere? I, I actually sat down with the IRS people and they didn't understand Bitcoin in the beginning. It was, you know, well, how do we trace, you know, when we don't even have any access? Mm. Good point. Mm. Their, their only access is when you make deposits into your account that they now know that you have, you know, uh, and that's how the IRS system works. But yep. so in every one of these past, we've seen it, uh, for instance, I would say in the mobile payment space, you probably would have to say, well, Square did a good job in capitalizing in the third tier markets, uh, the lower margins, higher risk. Um, and then I see companies like Amazon Pay, Google Pay, their, um, you know, and PayPal. I mean, I know Peter Thiel. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He really is a real cool guy. Um, so, and again, there was consolidation in the market. Now, the great thing about it is, is that there is what they call the draw up effect. Even if you're in what we would call a sub market type uh, platform, typically if it has value to it, that it has traction, it is going to most likely be a candidate for a takeover, mm. you know, emerge. So mm -hmm. what, what's what you're feeling on this? Do you think that the with the Fed coming in and it's going to cause some ripples? And then two, I guess the second question, do you see eventual consolidation where you're at? So you're, you're, you're right about kind of like uh, central bank digital currencies or, or Fed coin, things like that. And, and honestly, yeah, it is, it is another form of once again, consolidation of power control. And it really is kind of programmable money in a scary freaking dystopian way i tell you oh. what because like you know that's that's why i'm such a fan of, of of freedom of sovereignty things like this um you know human rights right uh because the the point is is that oh you're one of those <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah uh -huh, okay <laughs> no Welcome but aboard. it's, it's <laughs> literally you know a few of us these days that's mm -hmm. right <laughs> true <laughs> but um you know if if you if you don't get ahead of the curve and, and you don't kind of innovate with with what's coming down the pike, then then yeah, you know, you all of a sudden you can find yourself in, in a very messy situation, um, you know, with with the control and things like that. The the point is to kind of answer your question. So so yeah, there's there's a, just like with with Bitcoin, right? The proof of concept. Fourteen years later, okay, you know, it's it's shown legitimacy. Six point nine million times return. It's yeah. shown legitimacy. But what you have is you're going to have a so that's kind of like the centralized system. And then you've got like legitimate, like cryptocurrency, which is, you know, sure, as you mentioned with Coinbase, sure, they can have, you know, their custodians. Yeah, they can yeah have that's what they are. In fact, like they that. are. And there's many of them yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you can also have, you know, so you can take that custodianship that you're giving them. And then you can also take that into your own possession as well, where like you, you, you know, people say that, oh, in crypto, you don't have the physical coins, et cetera, and things like this. But you do have that actual control of, hey, you know, I can I can send to someone without the permission of a counterparty. It's, you know, peer to peer. Right. And so what I see in this, you know, what I see in the future is as kind of more control uh, and, you know, 
yeah, things like that consolidation of power kind of happens, you know, people are going to want to have have alternatives and, and other solutions. Uh, and what a, once again, what a dark future it would be if we didn't kind of have some of these things, because literally, if you, if you say that, oh, you have a certain political belief, or oh, maybe you're of a certain religion and things like that, well, they can choose with the central bank digital currencies, you know, okay, you know, maybe this person can't eat here, or maybe this person, you know, kind of just the, the control of like where you can spend your money and where you can, you know, uh, transact mm -hmm. and interact. And, and I think that's a pretty gross future. But once again, it, it's allowing people that were already going into this digital world, like, right? Like how many times are people, you know, using phone applications and things like this to transmit value versus say physical fiat and things. And so you're going to have people that, you know, kind of as the control consolidates, okay, maybe there's this other thing, this, this Bitcoin or this hacks or Pulse chain, things like this that allow uh, a separate network compared to, say, the visas, the MasterCards, things like that. So it's just and like I, I see it as well as that it's um, it's a Wild West situation right now. And that's hard to control. You know, um, I was a consultant with the Federal Reserve. And the problem was, is that when my time as I was and I was primarily a consultant for pay at the table, you know, the conversion of debit card to credit card. Back in the day, we didn't know, was the consumer going to adapt more to a debit card? And it was, you know, today we don't think anything about it, but people don't understand that these processes um, in the very beginning were pretty long and drawn out. Mm -hmm. And as you've said, now here we are a decade later into uh, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. We, we, In fact, that's what I've seen it. We've emerged from the concept of a coin to now a whole platform, a platform that has many different other options, as you were saying. Mm. And because there is no regulation, it's basically self-regulated for the most part. Um, there is a, a, a tremendous opportunity. Mm. It, it, it's no doubt about it because eventually consolidation and control is going to come. The, the feds are not going to allow this to continue where people such as yourself, they don't like the idea a 25 year old that can make an investment that covers the inflation factor and still allows you to achieve your goals. That, 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 you see, that's troubling because that makes you much more sovereign. Right. Well, yeah. you, well and, and, and you, you're, you know, you're definitely right that even if, because you have what's called decentralized finance, they call it DeFi with things like, uh, you know, like you mentioned, it's almost kind of like the internet itself where now you've got programs and applications, but but you're right where even if cuz cuz things like hex is just a smart contract with programmable yield it's like having a bitcoin miner if you stake it uh, as opposed to using physical electricity but that thing is is immutable so if someone wanted to shut it off you know things like this they they wouldn't be able to but you're definitely right where where that control comes is the endpoints right is the the coinbase when you go back to to cash out or some of these other things but what you can definitely have is Nowadays, with with smart contracts, uh, the code itself that's been audited, that's been proven, right? Uh, you can once again, it's really. I think it's really cool as you know, as a citizen, as someone that loves freedom, once again, to not have to you know rely upon one person controlling a whole mass or you know being able to ask permission. It's just a you know smart contract that you can interact with if if you want to or not, and be able to exchange value and be able to pretty much have like a Kind of what you have in the the traditional finance system, but then on say you know those decentralized platforms and those decentralized you know options. There's another point to this as well because if you look at the fiat currency, you know um, you can take a dollar bill. Now the dollar mm -hmm. bill is worth just a little over a penny, penny at the penny point ten, I think. Um, then you factor in inflation, which is really Fighting a lot of people, we're all seeing it. And imagine now that you have a, a, an ability in which is keeping not only pace with inflation, but it continues to increase in value. Uh, I would take that over a fiat currency any day. Now I may have to use that currency in order to do transactions, both you know in a public and even to a private. But if I know that you and I are connected into a platform sharing, for instance, uh, I'm assuming on the cryptocurrency, whatever we're, we're on platform, mm -hmm. you and I can share. We, we, we can send each other 
the the financial benefit of that. Now, eventually, it's going to hit into an account. Yep. I keep on saying I was at one time in my career, we were actually going to start our own bank. And you can mm. actually do that. And yeah. I guess that's the question, you know, that I look as the evolution of the crypto uh, evolution continues is that, okay, so are we going to see consolidation where currencies can actually be exchanged outside the central bank? Talk to Richard about that, it, because that we were having these discussions six, seven, eight years ago was how do you can do that? And I mean, the other thing, too, where you have it in cryptocurrency, you know, the other thing I worked with the FBI on this and a money laundering. Mm. You know, that, and I can tell you, it was a big concern when I was involved, and it still is. I mean, if you got yeah, basically yeah. a funnel coming in with no one really auditing the funnel, then yeah, you, anyway. Right. Well, yeah, that, that is the thing about, right, the, the internet or a blockchain, things like this, that, um, yeah, when, when you are signing up on an exchange, you're doing the KYC, the, the AML, right? Uh, for when you're actually signing that up. And even if it is going to a wallet, KYC is know your customer folks, by the way, you, you have yeah, to yeah, your ID yeah. and things yeah. like that, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, similar to say, uh, I don't know, just as you would with say your stock broker and things like that, you know, they don't just let you kind of privately do so. Um, but, but the point is, is in, in a, you know, there's, there's a little bit better of a solution, as you mentioned, being able to outpace inflation and as opposed to just keeping up with it, man, because once again, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of sad and disgusting to see once, once you kind of have that understanding. Um, and this is what allowed me to really have a grasp of, of hacks or get into crypto and understand why it was so important. Uh, because when you are just working more and more and more, because I was working uh, over time and things like this just to kind of keep up. And now it's even it's even worse because you go to the grocery store and things are, are more expensive. Nice. And, and so the, the cool thing about the uh, crypto itself, people say like, oh, you know, what can you do with it and things like that? Well, you know, you, you can sell it for the, the dollar or whatever, you know, whatever thing. You can convert it into currency, hard currency, what you would say. Yeah. So it's just yeah. kind of understanding, you know, assets versus, you know, liabilities or just earning a, a paycheck and, and spending it every week um, and, you know, not having anything residual. It's, it's nice to be able to have an asset. Like I know a lot of the people that are in our community uh, were, were big into real estate and big into some sort of, you know, passive income or things like this. And so this just allows you to do so with, without a whole bunch of the overhead, without, you know, calls in the middle of the night to, to fix the plumbing and things like that. So it's, uh, it's cool that there's- And then when the bubble hits, there. you know, you're going, oh crap, I thought it was like that. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so, it, it, I, and, and I know that a lot of people here, because like, again, we, we deal in the spiritual aspect of many things, but what I do know is that everything is controlled in the spiritual realm and we see it here. Uh, and, and money is, again, I used to teach a class on this. If you go back 10,000 years and you see the evolution of money, it's always been associated with a God of some sort, some deity. And it led me to when I knew you were coming on and I, so I was doing some searching and I haven't found anyone even approaching this. So who would be the demigod or the spiritual goddess or God that would control this aspect of wealth? Because this is what we're talking about. When you're making common people who don't have the, the pedigree, the bloodline, nor the education, right, that are becoming multimillionaires, hundred millionaires uh, very early in life, there is a, an aspect to this that you have to say, all right, so what's happening? Mm -hmm. So have you thought about that? Would, if, if, if you see the industry, who would you, I mean, I can't find any research on it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think I think that's what's so interesting about, and I I've you know once again been following you for such a long time, and as someone that grew up in in religion, it, it I always had questions and things like that. But but oh, I think it really comes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think it comes down to the egregore point that you kind of mentioned, where like, and I always kind of even though I didn't really understand all of the aspects, I kind of understood it as like from a very young age, I would always wear like blank T-shirts and you know just whether it was a plain blue or plain green or plain black, because I didn't like, you know, 
supporting some of these logos or supporting some of these things. So I think those are all kind of, I mean, you really hit the nail on the head and you really kind of like blew my, like my current or my previous paradigm, I should say, with that egregore that kind of like, I, I, would, I wouldn't say like, oh, just one, you know, Debbie Goddard entity type thing. I, you know, I would think that just like with, with companies these days, right. There would be kind of like several type of deal, but, um, but the, the cool thing is too, is over time you can kind of see, and you can kind of, uh, you know, get a look and feel for, for what seems more legitimate and, and what might be more sinister, right. Because there, there is always those kind of two aspects of, uh, you know, things going on in life. And so to be able to kind of see with discernment, okay, here's what's going on over here. And then over time, we can see this community or we can see this growth and prosperity over here that seems to <laughs> yeah, prove itself yeah, over time yeah. in the right way. As you were talking, I'm writing because it, it's, it's, it's just going off in my, my spirit is that, all right, so we're about to embark on this group experiment, number two, uh, creating our own Egregore, wouldn't it be interesting if we could actually connect our egregore with the egregore mm. that is obviously over this right. movement, whatever it is? It, yeah. it, it, it's it's impacting all of humanity, so that makes it pretty powerful in that. And then you're dealing mm. with the payment, the wealth aspect. So, are we seeing truly within the ethereal? the possibility that there's actually a wealth transfer. Oh yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's the largest transfer of, of, of yes. wealth in, in history that we've seen. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so true. And um, you know, I mean, some, some people, once again, yeah, 2011, or there's this one, there's this one really big uh, gold bug, uh, Peter Schiff that had the opportunity to buy a Bitcoin at a dollar. And so uh, once again, kind you know, I, I think, you know, 13, 14 years uh, later, he's like, Ooh, you know, might have missed the boat on that one. But mm. the point is, yeah, but the but the point is, is it wasn't just, I mean, and it's not just a one-off. I mean, things like Hex have gone 10,000 X uh, from its, you know, all-time low of January 5th, 2020 to its all-time high most recently, I think in September of 56 cents. And then you have consolidation. And then once again, a market, anything in life are, are cycles and just going back up to, to do the next one. And, you know, once again, with, with the dot-com bubble or, or some things, right? you know, some cycle might, might go up, have, have a little bit of lifespan and then just, you know, never, never right. go back up again. And so what you really have is over time, if something is showing sustainability and in, in growth and things like this, then, okay, here's the one that can actually beat the, the Amazons, the, you know, the YouTubes and the Facebooks and things like that versus uh, not beating that curve, the S curve. But the point that I wanted to say real quick about the, uh, the egregore thing is that, I forget which which stream it was of yours that I was watching uh, about like, you know, manifesting it and things like this. But I would argue as well that, yeah, you know, uh, that through the community and things like that, that with the soul tribe and stuff that there already is one created, et cetera, you know, but it's kind of strengthening or, you know, the more yeah. that you have input of uh, people and in knowledge and things like that, the, the stronger some of those uh, betterment forces for for freedom right and uh and sovereignty and things like that can can become versus maybe some of the other more malicious stuff that's trying to suppress people trying to control people every single move that they make that's what i see with poverty poverty is a curse i mm. mean i hate it you know i i my mother was she was under that curse of poverty and i remember as a kid going hungry mm. and it's it's a curse, and I, I how anyone could be, a, you know, against prosperity. I still to this day I don't understand that, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I believe in prosperity because in this realm, it's it's anything but prosperous. Mm -hmm. I mean, and 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 if we could just come into this world as we were meant to, uh, the journey would be a lot. I, I guess I, I would say a lot more fun. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's not. We're, we're sold immediately. I did the one yeah. on the birth certificate. We are chattel. Um, I did the whole thing explaining how the, the Federal Reserve System looks at us. We're, we're dead men. That's how they consider us. We yeah. can't even legally do transactions if you want to get real technical. Right. And so when I see opportunities like this that where 
the common person can come in. A family who says, well, you know, we, we, we're, we're, we're struggling just to be able to make an end. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, because what most people say, well, how do I start? Mm -hmm. don't have large amounts of money to start. Right. There, would you say that there is still that opportunity that people, and I don't know, I'm, you know, sure. let's just say a thousand dollars. Right. Is it, right. Is it beyond that point for people to still get involved? Oh yeah, I mean the opportunity. It's 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 prime. It's so. It's I always say this in my live streams that I do every Sunday at two p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That that we're so. And I left like, the link below. Oh, nice, nice. Day. Um, that like you know, because some people they'll ask me like, brand, you know, the the price of Hex already did ten thousand X, and that doesn't include some of the the yield and things like this. But they're like is it too late? And, and, you know, people were thinking the same thing with Bitcoin after, after a 10 X, right. After a two X that sold all their Bitcoin at hundreds of thousands. And then, you know, later it goes to do something Damn. that's never been seen before. Right. But never. the point is, yeah, is, is, uh, it really does come back to what you just touched on, right. The abundance versus prosperity. And man, it's like, it's like the, the teaching people to fish type of thing versus, you know, just giving them a fish. I mean, there's a, there's a whole ocean of fish and, and there's enough for everyone, right? But what you had uh, in, in the past or what we kind of see, you know, as we say, like the, the transfer of wealth and the transfer of power systems is from, say, something that has been controlled by, by very few or even just closed off privately uh, is, is now being a little bit more distributed or decentralized, right? Where, where it's kind of like a level playing field where, you know, not one person has the advantage of the other, but it's all kind of equal. And then, so, so to answer your question, yeah, there's, there's definitely opportunity. Um, the, the thing that I would say is you, you kind of just have to, to know where to look and kind of just have discernment of, of once again, I mean, obviously things like Amazon and things like that uh, are, are still doing well, but the, the opportunity was more so in, in the 90s. They, 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 they've hit their peak already. They, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. They can't, they've reached critical mass. I, I was an investor in JD Uniface mm -hmm. uh, and then Redback Networks. That's where I, I did very well when they were laying the fiber. And yes. yeah, yeah, I mean, way back then. But the thing about it is what I've seen with wealth is that it's cyclical and it, it, it never stops. And it's a matter of connecting as you did very early with the individual over at Quest into the showroom, planting that seed. And you didn't have, you know, where we came up through the system that, well, you were taught that at first it was the SNLs, the savings and loans. Well, they mm. went barely up. Yeah. Uh, then banks, banks are in the process of imploding right now. Mm -hmm. So you have to begin to say, okay, so where is that safe harbor? Right. And uh, cryptocurrencies, I, in fact, it was interesting. What city was it? Was it, um, I want to say it was Chicago or Detroit, but they now have a department in the city government that's mining for Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Now that the when I because I immediately when I said okay now see that that's a huge signal right there, you've yep, got yep. governments in Colorado, you can pay your taxes with Bitcoin or any mm -hmm. other type mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. True. Uh, so the the infrastructure is now being laid. You're mm -hmm. a part of that. The hex system, as I'm seeing, is part of the integration of that. Mm. And, yeah. Well, and and you know you mentioned uh, you mentioned things like. Because because Bitcoin itself is not programmable. It's just something that you can. I mean, all all it really does is you know it's got an inflation, so you can mine it, you can you can send it, and and you can receive it, things like that. And then Ethereum itself is the the current network that allows Hex, which is just a smart contract, to once again be the the second most popular product at your bank, which is like a certificate of deposit, right? Um, earning earning yield and earning because like when. Uh, and I've got a, I've actually got a photo on the wall, but uh, when, you know, every, every birthday and every Christmas, my grandpa, who's 92, he would give us like a savings bond. And it was like a 15 year savings bond that would go from a $25 principal to, you know, a $50 full maturity. And you could kind of any, you know, any time in between, you know, cash out some of that maturity. But the point is, is, is nowadays, if you, if you try and invest in some of those things, well, you know, 15 years, you're, you're getting a 2X, but the damn inflation is so much that like- You're you know, underwater before you even start. <laughs> it's negative. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's like, oh, man. 
<laughs> that's what I like it, you know, because, you know, at, at, I'm in that point in life where you begin to look at the options on this. And, mm -hmm. you know, my wife and I talk about this because, you know, payment, it, it's part of my blood, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. It, you can't get it out of you. And mm -hmm. as I seen the, the, the maturity of the blockchains coming in, and now establishing themselves into part of the integrated process, that's telling me it's it's leading for this rush because I don't know the capacity of it. I don't know if it has a capacity, but what it does tell me is that things are shifting. And if you're going to get in, in my opinion, do your homework, but this would be the time to be exploring that. Right. Well, and, and that, that was... One thing also that's really cool about the uh, the founder of Hex, Richard Hart, is that um, you know he developed an amazing product that's immutable. the The code is complete, right? It's had three audits, things like this. But then the the network itself, the substrate that that we're on currently, which is Ethereum, it has had you know it's had some problems in the past of of okay now there's because all of it you're right is is a blockchain and and is data storage and things like this and and some of the some of the things that the network uh, was doing was becoming more expensive to transact right and yeah. so it shouldn't be it shouldn't be um, if if any time you want adoption you need to make something easier for people not harder and not more complex and and not a hundred different steps and so he's also creating uh, another chain itself that allows all of these smart contracts. He's actually mm. taking the Ethereum code and, and beating them to some of the implementations that, that they've been talking about for about five years. And he's creating another coin that's poised to launch mid-May um, next month called Pulse Chain. And that's going to allow everyone to, once again, be able to you know, develop uh, smart contracts or be able to build, but then not have such a, an entry-level cost. Because Right now, once again, what is the the barrier to entry, right? Sometimes yeah. it might be, you know, $5 for a transaction here and there. Well, it shouldn't be that much if it's just a means to an end. And if it, you know, if you want mass scalability, you need, you know, you need everyone around the world to be able to do it. And as you say, even if you could, uh, does the actual infrastructure, uh, is it there for, you know, the whole world to be onboarded? And, and honestly, <laughs> it's not, you know, you can't, you know, Bitcoin itself only has, a certain amount of transactions that you can do within its blockchain and, you know, per day, things like this. And so, yeah, someone like Richard, who, who's shown previous success in, in multiple different industries, he's, you know, he's constantly innovating. And I think that that's really cool because you ask also like, Hey, is there, is there still opportunity? And, and yes, there, there definitely is. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes people feel like they, they miss the boat, but literally, Pulse Chain hasn't even launched yet. You know, it's poised to there launch, you, you know, next month, mid-May. And you've just got a lot of people in the space itself that that used to uh that used to be skeptical, which is which is very healthy. I think it's important to have skepticism, right? But then if if someone's actions and someone's results kind of uh disprove maybe some of that, then you know, maybe it is time to update the paradigm in the worldview versus doubling down on, you know, hey, this can't be possible. It is possible. Um, but then you're also right too, where, you know, the say like uh, Clash of Clans back in the day, like one of those popular applications had like a hundred million users per day. Well, that's a huge opportunity of what's the, the current, you know, uh, system and things like that for, for people, you know, that are just getting into crypto, like crypto itself is such a, a small subsection of, of what like, you know, the opportunity is onboarding, you know, people to a, a more prosperous system. It's huge. I mean, I don't think most people phantom just how big the system really is. But, um, and as I see this, inflation is driving the, the need, you know, and, and, and when it becomes a need, a necessity, that is always when you're going to see the, the, the spike go up. Um, I think that the United States, and along with other countries, have shown that their physical policies are errant, um, mm. that they're counterproductive in mm. where productivity is concerned. And importantly, more than if you look at it, if you have a CD, what are you being paid? One and a half, half a percent? Right. But yeah. we've got, you know, year-to-date inflation now exceeding nearly 17%. Yeah. I mean, Lynn and I talk about it. We we we're seeing this as well is that, well, so where do we, where do you shift assets, right? 
into yeah, yeah. to where you can begin to say, all right, well, they're going to cover the inflation curve for me. So that mm. basically is a net gain right there alone. Right. I mean, if my principle is still sound, where it's not being impacted by the outside inflationary pair, yeah. Yeah. Now, if I can see a return, an ROI on top of that, of, you know, multiplications of X's, mm. yeah. Yeah, well, that's the beautiful thing about what Richard did design with Hex is uh, it really is, you know, you mentioned the opportunity, right? It's it's kind of like that second opportunity that that's that usually never comes, but it's here. And uh, it's, you know, you mentioned, oh, the opportunity to invest in, in 2011 and things like that. And, <laughs> and Hex really is similar to Bitcoin because, you you know, you've got the, once again, the, the Bitcoin itself, um, you know, is, is being mined and things like that. But that's what people are being rewarded for for doing the mining and for the difficulty, but for the hex, it's it's got that similar aspect. Except once again, you kind of like are the the Bitcoin miner. You can you can hold it just like you could with with Bitcoin, where uh, once again you're um, it's not really doing anything for you, right? You can you can sell it immediately, you can send it. It's just sitting there stagnant. But then you can also do the the staking in hex, which is really where a lot of the value the comes is. from. I mean, like some of the average APY, and and once again, it's like a CD, right? Where I mean, you could you could stake for a year, and I think earn like, I mean, I think it's like ten percent, ten percent APY on a stake, and it's like like you say, where is there? You know, because there there always are solutions, and if there's not, then that's an opportunity to create that, as as you know, and as as Richard did too. The 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 first one to the market, that first mover's advantage, and that's what he had seen was that okay, um, you know, crypto's cool, all this other stuff, but it it shouldn't be just for for making mad gains and stuff. It should be actually utility. You know, what is the usability and the feasibility other than just magic internet money? You know, yeah. uh, which is which is what you <laughs> used to hear all the time with with uh, <laughs> with crypto. Right. So so now we're kind of having similar um, transitions of you know a, a legitimate you know decentralized more more abundance and prosperous system um, that's kind of similar to some of the the traditional systems you know in once again CD and things like that these days. But it's just better, and and the opportunity uh, is definitely there because instead of the the banks that have dark patterns and things like this, them kind of behooving from some of their structure. Well, now it's the the individual, the the person within, once again, that level playing field that's benefiting. And so that really allows them to, you know, kind of just be ahead of the curve because yeah. once again, you know, you're, you're seeing it. And I know, you know, people that, that are really, really, really struggling. And uh, anyways, it, it's cool to be able to see a solution and be able to see that forest through the trees. Cause I think most people that aren't even financially adept, they realize, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I wasn't following it before, but now I have no other option because I'm seeing it every damn week at the grocery store or, or in this scenario, you know, the gas pump and some of these other things. So it really does pay to, and you mentioned Fiat on the, on the side of my wall, I've got, I've got a dollar bill. I've got, uh, 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 what's it called? The the Bolivar from from Venezuela. My girlfriend's yeah. Venezuelan, so she knows all about that that hyperinflation. Um, I've got a uh, a bank of a uh, Korean, so I, a bank of Korea. I think it's a, a won, and then I've got a whatever that one is, and then I've got a uh, some pesos, like a, a fifty peso <laughs> fiat bill from from Mexico when 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 I went four years ago. Um, but just the point is, is that if you once again, uh, you know, you mentioned with some of the agricores and some of these things, study history, right? Because history shows that. Uh, all fiats, uh, which is just a representation of, you know, value transformation, um, you know, all fiat currency in the past has pretty much gone to zero. And, and the more that you print it and things like this, it's just not sustainable. Go look at, you know, some of these other. When you got Zaire that's printing, you know, $10 billion notes. I mean, you know, yeah. and, and we saw that in World War II as well, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, and the German mark was, you know, buckets full. I mean, wheelbarrows full yeah. of money. And you know why? And, and wow, the hour has gone by. Uh, you know why I, I, I see value in this mm -hmm. from a person where I am in, in, in this stage in life is you, your generation, mm -hmm. because that's all the assurance I need. You see, you'll be the impetus, the impetus that continues to push this, this change. Yeah. Um, and again, by the time you get to where I am, I will be watching over you and making sure that other things going. But the point is, is that for me, 
those are the other unstated indicators. Because if I see adaptability with a generation of prime consumer, which you are, you're now in that category, a demographic. So that tells me if you've adapted to it, then I need to adapt to it. Mm. And if mm. there's a profit in there, there's nothing wrong with profit. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's it's different than say like, you know, because, you know, some religions with like usury and stuff like that. Uh, it's different. Yeah, the tithe. Than, I mean, the yeah, tithe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Literally, literally. literally. But, but, but this, <laughs> but, but this is, this is different because it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not coming at the, the back of another person and things like that. No. It's, you know, it's the same thing that, that Bitcoin happened, right? It's, it's out of thin air and things like this. And, and the, the founder, Richard, he's, he's got a lot of uh, uh, quotes that he's coined and stuff, but like, you know, our made up internet money is, is better than the government's made up internet money and they're, they're central banks. And so, yeah, when you have something that's just, um, it's, we, we've seen the, the proof of concept already be successful with, you know, 14 years of the, the Bitcoin first mover advantages for that. Well then, okay, now we can take what's, what's been successful and actually build things on top of it to once again, allow people to have that second opportunity, uh, second option and, and second opportunity really. Because otherwise, yeah. you know, it's it's awesome to be able to to spread some of that uh, that wealth and that control and that power and stuff. Because the very last thing that I'll say, because I know we usually wrap up at one hour, is what what would you know a world look like in a, in a future where where people didn't have to you know get up and, and go work for you know what would they be able to do and what would they be able to create and, mm. and prosper if they didn't have to have something that was a necessity you know and if that was covered more easily as opposed to just exchanging so many hours that is away from their family away from their loved ones that they're never going to get back you know i i've said this many times that if if mankind would change revolt against the god of this system uh and this system goes back way back to the Babylonian system, um, is that every human should have an immediate savings account assigned to them. It should be fully funded by what we would say would be the lifetime initial potential, and then that would be invested for that person. Right now, that amount would be about $10 million at the mm. current rate of inflation. And that would bring that utopia about, Brandon. It would allow yeah. the it would allow humanity to pursue that which humanity, I think, was originally created for. I agree. And this this may eventually, who knows, may end up being that. I it, you know, mm -hmm. it's sure it's surely trying to. And I, surely... I mean, you got to give it effort. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like our egregore. It's still kind of in the echoplasm. You know, it, it's yep. it's starting yep. to take shape. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and yeah, you know, yeah, last thing I'll say is, is once again, there's, there's a, you know, pulse chain egregore too, and, and a pulse hex egregore too. And, you know, in some of these things that, that once again are a force for good, I mean, the Richard Hart uh, for, for the actual pulse chain launch itself, he didn't do an, an ICO or IPO or things like this, but, but there was $27 million raised for, uh, for, for SENS Foundation, a, mm -hmm. a charity for longevity. Oh. Uh, $27 million within five days, you know, and, and that, <laughs> that goes to show you the more people the, can't the, do that kind of stuff. Right. But, but yeah, mm. that goes to show you like some of the power of like, okay, you know, people putting their money where their mouth is trying to, to make the world a better place, but then also prospering from it. And, and it really is allowing, you know, you mentioned poor people can't do that stuff. This is allowing, you know, quote unquote, poor people or people it is, just like yeah. myself a couple of years ago to, to be able to dollar cost average in, I mean, Hey, you know, maybe, you know, maybe smoke, uh, you know, a couple less cigarettes or maybe, maybe go out to, to the bar, you know, a couple less times, you know, spend, you know, people can do, uh, you know, people can always make an excuse for something, or you can, you can take something and, you know, have, have an answer for it. That's just over time. And so that's what I did. I did like a dollar cost average, even if it was, you know, $25 a week that I could afford or, you know, $50 a month, whatever it was, it was, it was something going to what I, I wanted and, and wanted, you know, for the betterment of, of my future and, you know, those assets accumulate. I learned years ago, just that same principle. If I could take a dollar a day and put it aside today, you know, you could take ten dollars and put it aside and before you know it it does build up very mm. quickly i mean if you put ten dollars aside within a year's time you know you've got nearly four thousand dollars yeah yeah and your and your money working for you so and it is so i've left your uh link down there folks go over 
subscribe, watch Brandon's videos, you'll learn. Um, and I guess over there, they can go to hex.com if they want to learn. Folks, it's just the opportunity. Uh, we'll get more into this because yeah. we're on to some Egregore mm. talking to Egregore. Mm, yeah. One exactly. thought form sharing with another thought form. Mm. Isn't that what intelligence does? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I often wonder when I get over into the spirit realm, I, I hope I'm still inquisitive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, what the hell's going on here, you know? <laughs> Brandon, thank you. Uh, you are a delightful young man. What a, just a joy and a, um, we'll have to hook up so I, you know, yeah. love your energy and the knowledge you have. This is an opportunity. And folks, it, it tells me and it should show you the diversity of this group. Mm. We got people like Brandon, 25 years old. We got other people in here that are nearly 80 years old. Mm. Um, what a, 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 a dichotomy of uh, thought and demographics. And Brandon, you bring that, that, that youth that, mm. as I say, you know, it's a shame the youth is wasted on the young, but mm. yeah. nevertheless. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I'm just thinking... I'm just, you know, last thing I'll say is, you know, to the solo tribe or Texans, you know, I'm just taking something that we all have with, you know, people that are watching this now, uh, you know, the internet, uh, a cell phone, things like that. People sometimes make excuses that, oh, you know, I, I love what you're doing, but, you know, I don't know if I'd be able to do this or that or things like that. But, um, you know, being able to educate people with what you do know, because there's a lot that we don't know, right? But for someone like yourself, I've learned so much and within the community, right? You oh, know, and some of these other group. people. Um, and so the point is, is that just sharing what you know with other people is really, you know, feeling it's, it's taking this, which is like half empty and this, which is full and, you know, kind of mixing the two and, and making it the best of both worlds. Because I agree, kind of getting back to some of the, the, the core infrastructure of, of why, you know, we're alive and, and making it the most. Yeah. Well, you bring me a great deal of hope when I see this and, uh, wow. I have you back on too. I got to, I mean, this is, I've loved this conversation. And again, I don't talk a lot about my background in this area, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you, awesome. Brandon. Yeah, Far thank out. you. Great conversation, so man. I've, I've Folks, learned so much from you. Learn from him. Uh, this is, this is an opportunity and, you know, none of us are that age where we cannot learn something new and it might be profitable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, much love to everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Brandon, thank you. Stay with me as uh, we get out, folks. So peace, everyone. Be good. Nina's gone in about 50 minutes on her hump day show over there. So check it out. All right.